Chris, thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you, Harry. And many of you know uh, Dr. Chris Landon, um, clinical adjunct professor of development and behavioral pediatrics at the Keck School of Medicine at University of Central Southern California, director of pediatrics, Ventura County Medical Center, director of Cystic Fibrosis Foundation Affiliate Center. The list of Chris's work connections and commitments is a lengthy one. I also am amazed. He's also a film scorer, a beekeeper, um, technologist, um, founding partner of Veronix, a number, any number of things. Um, Chris, thank you for joining us and giving us your time today. And um, Chris, if anything else you'd want to add to the introduction before we begin a conversation, colleagues, about bridging the care gap with wearable devices and voice technology, um, revolutionizing remote patient care. Chris. Uh, no, uh, John, the only other thing is I need you on my show, Get Moving TV. We're on uh, YouTube and uh, Time Warner Cable or whatever it is, Spectrum, I guess now. So you have a great mellifluous voice and you've always been very kind in uh, our interactions. So if you're in Ventura, California, we'll, we'll have to have you on as a guest. We look forward to some SoCal sunshine. Um, Chris, you've been, you were a creator of one of the first telemedicine programs. And yet, as we began talking about this, this session here today, you brought and used the phrase, the care gap. And if you would just kind of define for us where it's been, but what you see currently as that care gap that needs to be closed. Give us your background, give us your thoughts, if you would, please. Well, I've been here in Ventura County since uh, 1989, uh, and we had uh, we were fortunate to have what became uh, uh, well it was Blue Cross in, in California at the time. And the care gap uh, was the lack of orthopedic surgeons in, in the Central Valley, uh, and so uh, they made a proposal, and uh, we were the first Blue Cross telemedicine center. Uh, for all of California, uh, because we could bring in specialists and make them available. Now, 1989, things were clunky, kind of pretty, pretty, pretty clunky. So they uh, would call me uh, Dr. Landon, the uh, blue screen of death. So I don't know if you remember Windows, but whenever you pushed the wrong button, uh, off cup came the blue screen. So uh, what we were able to do uh, is bring uh, care into uh, rural Northern California because they did not have access. When you have a patient who has to drive hundreds of miles, uh, and now I think uh, all of us are finding there's uh, a delay. If you need a, a, a consultation or a surgery, it's going to be three months, six months. Uh, uh, everything is on delay. So with the Blue Cross uh, Telemedicine Project, uh, we were able to put these uh, $60,000 carts. Uh, uh, we had uh, 90 of them. We spread throughout California. Uh, we were then followed by uh, UC, the University of County of California, Davis, and Cedar sinai Medical Center, so we could really provide uh, a more complete uh, uh, care. Now, at the time, uh, of course, our, our pipes were very small. Uh, so it's kind of like trying to suck an elephant through a straw uh, in terms of, uh, of how can we compress images. So I was very fortunate to work with Dr. Sorensen, uh, inventor of, of QuickTime. His daughter, so in terms of, of need, uh, was deaf. And uh, there was no one to speak sign language in the emergency room. Uh, and so we uh, developed a QCIF, uh, I'm dating myself here, but just uh, uh, something that we could put in the emergency room to, that would compress the signal. So we started looking uh, and uh, it, 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 if you have a black and you have eight blacks around it, then you just need one, one number. So we were able to we compress down the information that had to cross through that little two kilobyte per second uh, line. Uh, I started uh, actually with a, uh, 1969 uh, at Stanford Artificial Intelligence Center where, uh, uh, you know, you literally... When, when we looked for uh, bugs, it wasn't the bugs in the software, it was the bugs that were underneath the floor. So you get your rubber uh, suction cups and pull up the floor and look for the cockroaches down there. But just trying to move a chest X-ray from, from Alaska to Stanford over two kilobyte per second line, one pixel at a time, uh, uh, really, really drove this. Uh, now, of course, what's, what progressed, I uh, continued on, on uh, uh, telemedicine, 
Uh, we uh, evaluated stethoscope uh, and ended up with a, a Hewlett Packard model that had a teaching head. Uh, we were able to, to, to capture sounds. Uh, we were, I was very fortunate to work with Dr. Ashit Talukter at uh, uh, JPL uh, NASA, where we looked at, at the, at the uh, sound. So I, I looked at birds as part of my comparative psychology uh, and just looked at the spectrogram of birds. Can you identify a bird by its call? And of course, if you're a birder, that's what you do is you, you, you're out there and then get out your, your uh, 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 binoculars and you're looking for the bird and listening for the bird. We have to do the same thing with, uh, with murmurs as well. Uh, so we were able to, to uh, get uh, ultrasound confirmed uh, files. Uh, and uh, so that sound, even back then, is, is very important. The quality of the sound, the spectrum of the sound, uh, the 30 uh, uh, hertz to, to 20,000 hertz were really are uh, concentrating for, for, for cardiac sounds. In terms of uh, optics, uh, when I uh, continued on here in Ventura County, my patients were driving to Children's Hospital Los Angeles uh, to get their uh, eyes looked at by the uh, vision center down there. Uh, and I'd, uh, I've been in the Department of Oncology and Hematology and Pulmonology, and now Developmental Behavior Pediatrics, uh, because I'll, get, I'll have an interest. And, and one of the interests they had was in my patients not having to drive, not having to wait 183 days. So it's that it's looking for the need and how can how can technology uh, uh, help us through that. So what we did is uh, 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 well, we had one unsuccessful project where uh, we had our telemedicine cart for pediatric intensive care, but in, when you're in the middle of a volcano and it's blowing up, you really don't think about taking that telemedicine card from down the hall, plugging it into each of the instruments, each of the, the, the EKG and, and so forth. Uh, so the, there were some just uh, uh, problems there. What we ended up doing is uh, actually just working on video. Uh, and we have another hospital, Santa Paula Hospital, and I go, okay, can, you know, can I get all the vital signs? Oh, Dr. Landon, that's just too hard. Well, turn on the camera. Turn it towards the patient. Okay, they, they look pretty good. Uh, turn it, just make it look at the vital sign monitor there. That looks pretty good. Now turn it towards the doctor. Oh my God, the doctor looks horrible and pale. Let's transfer the patient. Uh, so the, the video is, was important. The audio is important. The, the, the sound and the sound spectrum uh, is important. Uh, the, the device itself, the, the, uh, one of the first electronic stethoscopes, uh, now... Uh, I, I can I can give it away. I mean, it's it's three hundred dollars now uh, is now to uh, we're working with the company Medica uh, and uh, eMurmur uh, in terms of this is just something uh, you give away. And it has the same quality uh, as this highly developed stethoscope from from uh, thirty years ago. So when we want to close the care gap, we want to look at it. I, I look at like the Duke of Wellington uh, looked at India, uh, and if you're going to uh, 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 bring your troops and bring your uh, artillery and so forth, and your everything is across the river. You look up and down the river, and uh, uh, at the Battle of Asai, he was able to find where the, there was two villages across from each other, and it was easier to ford. So you could bring bring everything across. And of course, the the British Tea Company uh, took took over uh, India, I guess because they had a flag. Uh, so that, that's really what the, the key to closing the care gap is looking at the need. Uh, back with the ophthalmology suite, uh, we were able to take our, our pediatric intensive care unit cart and convert it over to uh, one uh, where we could use the electronic uh, uh, ophthalmoscope. Uh, and in doing so, uh, I had to talk to Dr. Thomas Lee. Uh, from Children's Hospital Los Angeles, director of the Vision Center, and, and Dr. Stuart Siegel, who I, we, we built a pediatric oncology unit in, inside my clinic now. Uh, he, he said, oh, yes, you need to talk to Dr. Lee. He's is a visionary. Uh, and uh, uh, when I talked to Dr. Lee, uh, I said, oh, my goodness, you, know, you should bring up one uh, ophthalmologist here once a month, and then we can close the gap uh, in between visits with uh, tele-ophthalmology. And what he told the Lions Club, uh, uh, as we were raising funds to do all this, he said, and when I hung up my phone, I said, that man is crazy. Uh, but he saw it too. 
you have to close that care gap. Uh, and also by my patients not having to go down there, it freed up a chair uh, so that, that he could see more patients uh, within, uh, within the Children's Hospital of San Jose and Altamed practice. So we want, we want to close the care gap. We're closing it at both ends. We're allowing that chair uh, to be used uh, properly. And it's giving access to my patients. It's decreasing the transportation uh, barriers. And when we close the care gap, uh, uh, transportation is big. Uh, my patients, I have patients who fly in from whatever, 500 miles away to see me for cystic fibrosis. Uh, if I can follow them up with a telehealth appointment, if I can put a device in their, in their, uh, uh, their uh, house uh, where I can measure pulmonary function with a forced expiratory volume at one second monitor and, and, and find an exacerbation, uh, that makes all the difference in the world. Uh, we want to close care gaps because so many of them are also now around uh, uh, health equity. Uh, if uh, I, uh, I want to have access to a sleep study, uh, lots of luck in the inner city. Uh, and, and then also th there's a, uh, uh, a mistrust sometimes of, of doctors. I was just up in uh, uh, Port Townsend, Washington. And someone with private insurance had had a had had a sleep study, and uh, it definitely was abnormal. She was definitely having symptoms, falling asleep in the afternoon, uh, uh, right after work. She'd fall back asleep. Obviously, having symptoms uh, uh, of her sleep deprivation, and the next appointment with the sleep physician to prescribe the CPAP and the proper mask uh, was in uh, twelve weeks. So we'll see if my uh, my. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Prescription pad will do that. Sorry, John, you got me going. So no, I, I, Chris, well, well, this that's, should be a dialogue here. Yes, we Sorry. want you. We want you to be going. I mean, you talked about various elements of care gap and all, if you will, the you know from sound to visuals and the like that can help close that. You started on this journey in 1989, um, and now here we are, 2023. What has, from a clinician, from your perspective, what has changed? What has made the gap larger and or more difficult to find that forward across the river to, to keep closing it? What's in front of you now that perhaps wasn't in 89? Well, the, uh, I, I think uh, I was looked at as a heretic, uh, you know, just as I've been out in the desert with the animals and talking to the animals and I'd come in and try and push a telemedicine project, a home blood pressure monitoring and you know, people roll their eyes. And then uh, uh, there's this thing, what, what happened? Oh, COVID, that was it. So with the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, uh, they've been very, very supportive through the years. They'd pat me on the head and go, oh, you made a website in 1989. What's that like? Uh, I had a, a, a questionnaire that the patients would fill out ahead of time. So when they came into clinic, they, they brought their, their questions. So when, when the pandemic hit, Here's a, a group of patients, 30,000 of them across the United States with 130 centers, and they're not going to be able to visit. They're not going to be able to do pulmonary functions in, in the office. They're not going to be able to, when they're in the hospital, they're at high risk of, of COVID. So we need to be able to manage uh, home IV antibiotics. So uh, since we'd been at it, uh, looking at a little different project, which was transitioning my adolescent patients to an adult service in Santa Barbara, uh, we said, oh, well, what we'll do is we will uh, uh, have them be able to take a walk around the clinic. So we'll be able to desensitize them because the, the thing about uh, 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 chronic diseases and health equity is you, you have uh, what's like a, 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 a pastry store and you have this beautiful glass and you've got your fingers up against there and you're just looking at that beautiful pastry on the other side. Uh, so you're you're out there. Uh, and then the next is uh, there's a couple people from your group and they're inside and they're eating pastry. So what our, our CF clinic does is it really gives people a sense of belonging uh, so that it's, they, they, they know that we are, uh, uh, know what kind of ice cream uh, they like. We know what kind of movies they like. Right now, in terms of, of, of health equity, we're really looking at uh, uh, if I have a video translator, if I don't have someone fluent on my staff, I have a video translator, that's fine. But when we go in for that video translation, 
We're not asking about ice cream or favorite movies. We're saying, did you take your medication? Are you adherent? Are you? And so, so the the whole uh, uh, use of video uh, is something that we've uh, we've had to uh, to learn that the, the pandemic really uh, uh, pushed that. The uh, unfortunately, uh, no money, no mission. Uh, we, we get paid for it. Uh, and so before that, oh yeah, I, I, the whole Medicare, I, I had uh, uh, the Vivo Metrics Life shirt back in the 1990s. Every breath you take, every move you make, I am watching you. I can do home sleep studies. Each device uh, would cost uh, about oh, $1,500. I had a $100,000 prototype of it, uh, respiratory inductive plethysmography and recording into a little uh, uh, Palm Pilot. I don't know if you even remember Palm Pilots, but that was our... Uh, and I uh, had uh, my, one of my devices we were using it in a child and they, uh, they left with it and it said life shirt right across the front. And, uh, the, they reappeared about three months later and the school called me and said, Dr. Landon, he wore this, this fashion device, uh, to school. And, uh, why did you put life shit on it? Well, he had a big enough belly it had, it had rolled up. So, so remote patient monitoring for, for something like uh, uh, sleep, being able to do that in the, in the inner city, uh, being able to, to follow someone with a chronic disease at home for their blood pressure. Uh, uh, we use the scale. I used to use a shoebox and I'd go, okay, well, I, can, I know I can take pictures. So if you're in congestive heart failure, let's take a picture of you when you're completely uh, uh, using your uh, Lasix and, and your body is removed of the excess water, your heart is saying, oh, I need to expand the chamber so it, it, it contracts better, but it doesn't. Uh, and so then I could see, oh, now I, I've got a digital scale uh, at home. Uh, for the blood pressure, we have white coat hypertension. I, have, I used to take home more adults than I do. we need to increase your medication. Of course, they'd fall down at home because at home, they're not seeing the white coat. Uh, and so their blood pressure would be down. So be able to monitor them uh, uh, in the home. And so what we've seen uh, is the payment mechanism, which again, no money, no mission. There are states who are looking, gosh, telehealth, it looks like a, we're not quite getting what we want. So we'll, we'll, we really have to work hard to maintain that. Uh, in my own office, when it, much like, uh, having to drive uh, down to Children's Hospital Los Angeles, carry, you know, cover me. I'm going to make a turn. I mean, LA is a dangerous place. Uh, uh, I can follow my patients at home. I can do that quick follow visit without them having to take four kids on a bus, three three different exchanges, uh, and, and I, I can I can do that follow up visit. Uh, so it's not just desensitize them as we were with the cystic fibrosis. Here's your new team. Here's the new team that you're going to be belonging to. Uh, but it's also once you have that relationship, be able to follow them. And when I see patients in their home and I, I say, hey, open your refrigerator. If I see no food in there, but th that makes a big, a, a big difference for someone I'm trying to get uh, to have proper nutrition. Or when I see a beautifully well-kept home, uh, in, a, in a mother who I'm not sure if she's really understanding uh, what it is that I'm trying to, 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 to get done, it, it makes a big difference. Chris, Chris, let me interrupt you and just and Please. perhaps <laughs> um, dial in a bit more on, you've used the term health equity a number of times in this conversation. And I know that that topic is, you know, Freddie Yared, um, Emery, David, this, the topic of health equity, very important to so many on this call. You've raised it, Chris, a number of times, and you see this as not only closing the gap, but closing a very important gap, um, one perhaps under pursued in terms of bringing greater, um, greater care, better outcomes to certain populations. Speak a bit more about that and the importance of overall remote patient care, and then perhaps specifically less expensive means of providing that patient care? Well, I think I'll just, I'll, I'll circle back to sleep apnea. Uh, so in the inner city, uh, uh, we don't have great access to docs. We don't have great access to sleep docs. We don't have great access to sleep centers. Uh, and we have, have a, a basic uh, uh, lack of trust. So building up 
within the inner city, within the Latinx and black population, really supporting support groups to yes, this is this is going to make a, a difference for me. We we worked with uh, Aetna uh, around uh, uh, childhood obesity, and uh, uh, one of the one of the churches. Uh, uh, had come up with a, a proposal for Aetna, which is a beeper. And on the beeper, it said uh, on Sundays, it would go off right after right after the uh, the services. And it would go, hey, uh, don't don't eat the fried chicken, eat the turkey. Uh, st st you know, stay away from the macaroni salad, go for something more. Uh, but it was so annoying. Most people just threw it in the toilet and tried to flush it down. So so finding that, uh, that the, the appropriate way uh, of support so sleep, sleep is a big one. Right now, we're looking at, at, at uh, with cystic fibrosis, uh, which is a, a, when I started was you were dead by age two, uh, and then we got it to age 12, and then 19. And I would go to, this is back, gosh, early 80s. I would go to funerals of teenagers uh, every winter. Uh, and the teenagers would go, it's just terrible. And they'd be going to clinic together for 10, you know, 15, 20 years. And all of a sudden, whoever they kissed three years ago is now no longer coming to, uh, uh, no longer coming to clinic. So for this particular disease, uh, this was one of the first ones where we looked at the genome and we were able to uncover inside the genome uh, defects in DNA. And what they, they did something called venture philanthropy. They put out a, a grant saying, okay, we have $60 million. We'll be, what have you got? And uh, a company uh, had a drug that didn't work for Alzheimer's, that didn't work for type two uh, dementia. And they go, oh, what the heck, we'll throw it in. And it worked. It fixed an underlying defect, uh, put 10 pounds on patients, improved their, their uh, ability to breathe uh, 10% or more. So that medication, uh, you know, in terms of healthcare costs, basically my cystic fibrosis patients cost about $60,000 a year with the, the different medications and so forth. That drug is, what do you think? 100,000, 150, 200,000, 250, $325,000 a year. And as it turns out, it's effective for Caucasians not effective in the genomes, the genotypes that we see with my Hispanic patients and my black patients. Uh, and so we're working now uh, uh, with uh, four different uh, uh, universities around this. And inside our electronic healthcare record is the information that I need because following my medication is 20% of the battle. 80% of it is the social side of life. This is where our, our health equities, our ability to, uh, I'm having an exacerbation, I need to go in the hospital and I can't get an appointment for three months. Uh, I, I, I don't have transportation. My next door neighbor was fighting this morning. I missed my appointment. So uh, when, we, when we're uh, uh, looking at health equities and cystic fibrosis, now I can take my electronic healthcare record from Cerner. And I think we can probably do this with uh, Epic as well and, and some of the others. We can now look at area deprivation index. Okay. What's around? Are there is there a park nearby? What's the air quality? Because we know that has that has uh, that has impact. Uh, can we provide inside that patient's home basically a clinic visit so they don't have to have that transportation barrier? Can we decrease uh, uh, the the amount of time it takes to treat an exacerbation? At uh, uh, the University of Southern California, we're looking at at uh, lung transplant uh, and uh, health equities because. Uh, what we know is that our uh, patients who, are, who look non-adherent are not going to get a set of lungs, and there's definitely uh, a reflection by that record uh, that they've been that they you know maybe they don't deserve that set of lungs. But we're also you know looking at, at uh, uh, you know how people self-perceive. There's little tests out of, out of Harvard uh, where we can we can look at that. Uh, then also inside so inside the home uh, uh, also looking at distributed ledger technology. So how can I connect up USC with Cedar sinai with UC San Diego, with Ventura County Medical Center? How can we have one record? So for lung transplant, if you're rejected at USC because they're afraid it'll affect their statistics, well, you're going to go to UC San Diego and Stanford, and you've got a pile of records you have to bring with you, uh, everything from hepatitis C and so forth. So if I can get that down uh, using distributed ledger technology uh, with uh, Vironics, 
uh, 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 we've applied for a health equities grant uh, uh, to put put uh, uh, blood pressure and FEV1 and uh, scales inside the home uh, along with video uh, so that we can also have, have an AI supervision uh, so that uh, I can see if they're losing weight, I can see if they're losing. Uh, and uh, as we've uh, uh, rolled this out, uh, there's very good, I think we're 96% adherence uh, and people, people actually like uh, knowing about, about their health. So the, the, uh, we did a survey uh, and, it, and it just, just, just back to the ice cream uh, with, uh, we have seven cystic fibrosis centers. And I said, oh, do you know who your diversity officer is at your institution? Not a single one knew who their diversity officer was, nor were they reaching into the clinic uh, uh, to find out. So that's where we're really trying to look. Is there a different healthcare record? We, uh, you know, is, it, is the grade that you got in math and in fifth grade important to your health? Well, pro probably so. And I think that's what Watson, uh, uh, you know, yeah, was trying yeah. to, to trying to add in. So uh, how can we how can we close that uh, that care gap uh, the, and and bring those people uh, who are now still looking outside the pastry shop? They can't get into that three hundred and twenty-five thousand dollar drug. Still give them a sense of belonging. But when we did surveys, my my the the staffs at these seven ho hospitals didn't have a fluent enough Spanish speaking person to really get at that at that heart, asking about the quinceanera and asking about the abuelita uh, and, and worrying about susto and are you know are you do you have a raw egg over your your your. Uh, your, your child who's just been diagnosed with cystic fibrosis. And you know what? All the information is in English. Uh, we looked in, uh, 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 around an Alexa skill, actually, so that we could read off so that someone could call in, ask the question uh, in Spanish and have it, have it respond with just basic information. So, uh, so the care gap, uh, uh, it, it, we need to improve our game. We need to look at the childhood opportunity index, the area deprivation index, look in the home at, uh, area, at air quality. I, for housing, if you've got nine people in a two bedroom house and it's next to the Firestone rubber factory, you know what? Your lungs aren't gonna be doing as well. So how can we take all these things, the, the, the AI, the DLT, the dist distributed ledger technology, uh, video, audio, use the, the stethoscopes, uh, and, and how can we uh, 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 screen it? Uh, we were working with, uh, uh, or with uh, around this Mediaica uh, stethoscope and e-murmur. And for back to Dr. Tolukter and JPL NASA, the cardiologist blocked us. They wouldn't let our SBIR go through uh, in terms of, of completing. He went on to run NIST. Uh, and so now uh, we're returning I think to where it's going to be uh, more acceptable because we can teach how to put a stethoscope on. It's not that hard. Uh, we have a very good satisfaction uh, with, the, with the proper placement and, and that the, the cardiologist feels like, okay, if we can get a baseline and all of that baseline has to say with an AI uh, evaluation of the murmur is see the cardiologist, no need to see the cardiologist because there's a lot of a lot of, uh, you know, if you have children or grandchildren, <gasps> the doctor found a murmur and then you go to the cardiologist and get your $1,500 echo and it's, oh, it's an innocent murmur. Well, uh, I, I, I trained with uh, uh, Dr. Moss, who's a pediatric cardiologist who wrote the book and has an auditorium after, named after him. And he said, you know, sometimes it pays to be a wee bit deaf. To, 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 there's some things you just don't want to panic about. So having AI just reassure the pediatrician or... To, to save that that follow up visit, has there been a change in the sound of the of the valve? Is is this something we need to bring them in for? So Chris, let's talk let's talk about sound. Yeah. Let's and and yes. I'm going to ask you one more question, and then then open it up to our colleagues here on the line. Um, but let's talk about audio. Let's talk about voice. Let's talk about sound. Um, you've you mentioned e murmur. You've talked about. Um, you know, Kivo Health and Vivo Metrics and Cap Medics and any number of audio sound technologies. Tell us where you see that great value coming. And then let's just talk about voice and what you see as the future of voice in this. Then we'll open up for questions. I think I'll just start with the Circle Plus Monitor. I can do a home sleep study uh, on a ring. 
and it's a, it's equivalent to an in office uh, in, in lab study. So I put put this ring on, uh, charge it for an hour and a half, and I, I have results. And I'm able to follow. Uh, we have a project coming up in uh, Cleveland where we'll be following pregnant women. Uh, we'll be following 1,700 uh, inner city pregnant women. Uh, uh, but the instruction book is, uh, it's got teeny tiny print. So built as part of the app uh, is instructions uh, that you can hear. Uh, so, and I was just with a uh, uh, 97 year old uh, uh, putting this on him and uh, Dick Van Dyke. And uh, yeah, he had trouble reading, reading it. He pointed to his 50 year old wife on the treadmill. She said, oh, we'll have her read it. Oh, that's how you live to be 97. Yes, Dr. Lenz, so I live to be 97. So having, the, having that combination of a visual uh, 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 with that tool that you can write on both sides and lasts over a thousand years called paper, uh, but having it augmented in terms of instruction. With CapMedics, we have a talking inhaler. And so I, I, if you've ever seen the, the, the uh, house episode where my inhaler is not working. I'm using it just like the pharmacist showed me. And of course she sprays it out into the air, which is what the pharmacist did. Uh, so this inhaler talks to you and you, you shake, 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 shake. So you hear this little shake, 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 and then makes you inhale it for the proper amount of time. Uh, and so we were able to, to do, I, I, again, by having that augmentation with instructions connected to a device, that device goes to Bluetooth, goes to a, 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 a a portal where the doctor can can follow how how compliant you are, uh, and then it, we're talking about Vivo Metrics, the company, uh, the AI uh, company that I, I helped found. This is an Oxford University set of mathematicians, uh, and just moving them into the practical uh, uh, parts. And so uh, they're they're still you know looking at the market, and and uh, uh, we have uh, billing uh, occurring, and Medicare is actually paying for the. The, the whole system, uh, but I just got a voice survey. And so it wasn't just, wasn't just fill out this survey and you'll get, you know, a $25 card, which I, I get, I don't know, 10 or 12 of those a day. Uh, for reasons that I'll, I'll find out, uh, your responses were by voice. You had to click the voice and it wanted 30 seconds at least. So I don't know if they're measuring uh, uh, timber or that they're, they're, gonna, they're finding that there's uh, better adherence uh, uh, to answering the questions. Uh, but voice, it, it, uh, when, when this first came up, I go, no, that voice, I don't know. Because we do see a lot of things, things coming out of, uh, you know, is it a, a measure of Alzheimer's, uh, Parkinson's disease? Uh, how, can we, how can we use voice for early detection uh, 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 of, of Alzheimer's five years before? How can we follow the effect of, of uh, Parkinson's medications? Uh, how can we uh, work on, uh, on all these things? Uh, and a lot of them are very cutting edge and the companies will, 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 will fall away. Uh, but really it's being incorporated again in instructions, uh, uh, adherence, uh, the heart sound uh, to me is a heart talking to me, uh, uh, the voice survey, uh, it's being incorporated in a lot of different areas now. And, and this is a very valued and valuable project you have here. Chris, uh, thank you um, so much so many golden nuggets here and the things you've shared. Let me open it up and colleagues just take yourself off mute, open mic here. I have a number of other questions for Chris, but I think it'd be best to coming from the experts. So please open mic and questions for Chris, comments. Chris, it is so good to see you and hear from you. And hey. It's been too long. <laughs> so this COVID, thank you yeah. for that too. It's great to hear all of the... Uh, inspiring stories and uh, the uh, service that you've uh, provided through these technologies and medical knowledge over the many years, but particularly during the acute crisis we've all faced in the past few years. So, uh, so thank you for that too. And good to see you, uh, you know, uh, and hear from you. So I just wanted to say that too, and uh, just how inspired and excited. Uh, I know a number of us on this call are, we've been uh, kind of, taking it on the road, so to speak, with our little road show. Yeah. And uh, that's been quite fun to get to do and uh, to support uh, Linux Foundation, Trustmark, Open Voice Network, and uh, the whole idea of this nexus and intersection between um, health and wellness, not just medicine, but health and wellness yeah. and 
uh, voice technology and artificial intelligence. And of, of course, what you talked about, the privacy and the, the protections required for that too, and the, yeah. the, and the trust, you know, things like blockchain and uh, distributed ledger, yeah. you know, like you were saying, and providing that trust that you can know that a record is a record, that an AI prompt is from the person that says it is, or that a yeah. AI uh, response has some provenancy and you know where you're getting your information from. Um, We've had the privilege of Microsoft came down and gave 125 of us early access to Prometheus, basically chat GPT-5, which doesn't hallucinate on medical uh, uh, references from uh, JAMA or New England Journal of Medicine or other things like that. And then tying that in with some of the incredible capabilities um, that uh, you're talking about too, just starts to look like you know, a recipe for acceleration, you know, exponential acceleration, like we hear from uh, our buddy Peter, Peter Demondes, and uh, Daniel Kraft, and some of those those uh, those team members too that we've had the privilege of working mm -hmm. with. And then just to know that we have such incredible depth of personal stories, like you told, and personal stories from from Mark, from Freddie in particular. You know, I've loved uh, working with Freddie uh, the past. Uh, uh, well, it's been over a year now, uh, but uh, some of the time, and just you know, hearing that too, and uh, and uh, Yara and stuff, and as well too, and just hearing their their stories. I just wanted to, you know, affirm and say, just I, I really love the the power of this team that's come together that uh, John, you and Harry have assembled, and uh, you know, just wanted to kind of reaffirm that too. That uh, I'm happy to help with whatever uh, we need or whatever is needed from the team too. So thanks, David. David, David thank you. Uh, thank you so much, um, Chris. Any response and colleagues? Any other questions? Jared, Freddie, please. But just for, for, for me, real quick, uh, uh, David is, of course, always had the, the VA uh, there and is able to hide things, goes, oh, I'd like you to be able to look under the curtain, but uh, you can't quite do that yet. So uh, we're working with uh, Fathomworks here, which is for the local Navy base, and I have a couple of things I can't tell you about either now. So, uh, But that's been, that was, and that was the advantage of HIMSS and, and, and these, the, the meetings that you're putting together now, is that we can be in the same space and, and uh, we can give uh, talk together and moderate and, and get to meet uh, people right at the cutting edge. So uh, the, these things are very important. I hope we we, we do get to have the the, the uh, wetware, that's you and me, uh, get together again and not just to meet over over video. So uh, the other thing we do is, uh, the, it is a, we, we're in American Samoa. I'm in the Northern Marianas Islands, uh, again, with equipment. And we're down to a clinic in a bag. So again, the advantage of the tools uh, is they are less expensive. We're working with, I won't say Dollar General Loud, so you don't hear that, uh, but just they are looking the same. We're looking at the American South and we're looking at, 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 at they may be sleeping on the floor, but they've got a cell phone. Uh, and so what can I sell out of Dollar General that's a screen that gives health information that I can put by the refrigerator about uh, menus. I can get a scale in there that's a $12.50 scale. I can get a blood pressure cuff. It's a $12.50 blood pressure cuff. And they've knocked out all those stupid cough medicines for kids because they never worked unless they were 20 proof or more. Uh, and they, they, what can we do? How can we become a, a health center uh, uh, in our local, you know, Rite Aid, CVS, whatever. And, and that's, uh, that's, we'll, we'll see some experiments and failed experiments too. Uh, but we really need to get in terms of health equity, get the price down, get it, get it in people's homes. Uh, make it pleasant enough so that it's, it's a no-brainer, it's adherent, and voice, I think, is going to be uh, be key to that as well. Chris, thank you. Other questions? Comments, questions? Hey, Dr. Chris. Um, hey, Vijay. Yeah. Thanks for the wonderful um, uh, sharing your knowledge and, and experience. Uh, one question from the clinician aspect, um, we have a two type of um, call or maybe appointment with the doctor. One is a telephone only appointment and another one is a video appointment. Um, from your perspective, what do you think is like, and which one is the better and uh, like, and, um, is any anything we can, um, we can get out of that. It means not only the, the direct question and answer, but sometimes it may be some kind of, uh, from the voice, we can analyze the mood 
um, or how they are doing or something like an art, maybe the video call is, is giving the better facial expression, something like that. So it's my question is like, and what's the better way we could uh, get most out of from the teleappointment, either from telephone only or uh, video call? I think the first is no money, no mission. So here in uh, California, they're moving uh, voice call. They're not going to pay for anymore. They just go, oh boy, we got all these doctors out here who'd love to commit fraud. Uh, 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 the the uh, FBI actually uh, became involved in my healthcare system, and they were uh, uh, feeling there was some healthcare fraud going on. At not my office, but the I got to talk to FBI agents, and uh, they said, "Oh yes, we just were in court with a case of a serial biller." Uh, and so I think there's there's uh, the avoidance of, of fraud is, is going to be important. The no money, no mission. If you're not paid for a, a telephone call, we have a lot of, as you know, burnout from uh, uh, physicians and the patient portals are making people crazy. You know, people have, oh, I just have, I just need my medication refilled. Oh, I have been looking at Google and here's the 487 things that, you know, I'd like to answer uh, uh, in an email. So, so we do need to be paid for, for our work. Uh, uh, we've, uh, uh, and people have to make the time for the call too. I mean, I've talked to people while they're pushing their dog around Walmart. Uh, what the heck does this have to do with, uh, you know, you making time for, for this? Uh, and when we did with USC, we did uh, counseling for diabetes. Uh, by phone and uh, made the arrangements. And uh, now by the third call, ah, we got a better things to do. We're not, not interested. So we have to be able to engage the patient uh, in this dialogue. It has to be uh, uh, timely for them as well. They're sitting by the phone for two hours because we're busy in the office. So it needs to be a, 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 a timely appointment. For, uh, for me, I like the video uh, be, for the exact reasons that you're talking about. I can see the expression on their face, much like back to my intensive care unit and $60,000 worth of equipment. I just need to look at the patient, the monitor, and the doctor. And if any one of those three is uh, not doing well, we're, we're in trouble. The, uh, uh, David can probably sp speak to this as well. There's, there's, there's Department of Defense uh, technologies out there uh, in terms of threat uh, uh, de detection that are very sophisticated and our Israeli uh, friends are very uh, uh, sophisticated uh, uh, with this as well. So, you know, what, what's what's the point of having a human involved at all? I mean, we've got chat GPT, you know, 82 uh, uh, coming out. And we had a set of doctors who went to, to, to chat GPT uh, and said, I need to be more compassionate with my patients. Can you give me some advice? Oh, my gosh. You know, what are we being, what, what, what is the necessity of a doctor at all? Uh, and that is, you know, that it's that engagement uh, uh, with the patient. It's knowing the patient's social uh, uh, history, and uh, you know, we're we're back. Hopefully, we're getting back to the buggy days. Uh, you know, we're we're out, and we know the family. We've known them for twenty or thirty years, uh, and we know about grandma and why they're worried that you know we're going to die of the same thing as grandma. Uh, now, is there a difference between? But, you know, a voice conversation, a video conversation, be able to look in refrigerators and look at look at the patient. Uh, and then in terms of visual cues, that's 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 uh, very possible. Uh, we, we were doing a project with the World Health Organization Management Project. This is back. Uh, it was Nigerian HIV. And uh, we were trying to do facial recognition. And uh, actually, if you put Spock ears on uh, the, the facial recognition <laughs> is disturbed. Uh, so we were doing uh, retinal uh, uh, screening uh, as, as a way to follow the patients as they move from village to village in terms of, uh, of HIV medication. So the video to me is important. We have two that, you know, and I think Microsoft will take over the world there. Uh, we use uh, Doximity and, and uh, uh, FaceTime. Doximity is terrible. Their compression is terrible. Uh, we uh, we have uh, uh, Zoom was very important in that they what they did is they just bought repeater towers uh, uh, just all over so that they had a good signal all the time. Uh, and so with Doximity, if they haven't done that, if your nose is in Chicago while your ears in Philadelphia, that's just not a good video conversation. If you have any 
problem in terms of connecting, that's that's not a good conversation. So I think we have to solve uh, solve the connectivity. We have to for the United States. We need to to solve some of the mechanical things. We need to solve uh, some of these uh, uh, video apps. Uh, but in in your experience, what, what which do you prefer? Um. Yes. It's a. Uh... <laughs> Sometimes oh, it's like, an, yeah, it's, it's my experience is a telephone call. It's like an, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's kind of what kind of problem we are discussing that may be um, put into context. But my experience as a patient, I have a, I had a multiple telephone call. It's mostly the education aspect. They can call and discuss about uh, my health conditions and, and, give some education on that, but it's not in uh, provider communication, maybe some time provider assistant or nurse assistant um, they're getting. So that, that's my experience. No, and, and that's, it's a problem. I mean, we, we, we don't have many doctors. We're all dropping out or dropping dead. It's not, uh, this, this is uh, the electronic healthcare record and these patient portals are really, you know, I had a, a Christmas card from a grandfather said, Dr. Landon, uh, my my daughter, who is one of my pediatricians, has not been able to to read to her daughters in bed for a year. You have to fix this. So we worked on on fixing that. So we need, you know, if we're using technology, if that can improve things, if we can get us out of office on time, uh, and, and we can feel uh, that we're we're uh, ha having a, a complete uh, healthcare role in there. I think you know we used to say that. Uh, uh, physicians were physician extend physician assistant extenders because they're they're seeing all the patients and we're going to be AI extenders I think uh, and AI may be better than us in terms of, of compassion. Yikes! Thank you. Just Jeff. a few uh, just a few minutes left, colleagues. Any any final questions for Chris? Dr. Chris Landon, thank you. Thank you for your time, for the preparation here, and thank you all for joining. Um, this has been the Health, Wellness, and Life Sciences Community, the Open Voice Network. And again, this is this uh, meeting has been recorded. It'll be on our website as well as in our Google Workspace. Chris, again, thank you so much for the time, the conversation. Thank you all for joining us today. Appreciate it.